So um, Dr. Nugent from uh, Illinois um, uh, will, will go first. So hi, everyone. This is the, um, the first conference or meeting that I went to that people don't talk about genome sequencing. Um, and I'm really actually excited about learning a new tune, uh, many new tunes that you have here. Uh, so I would like to present um, an argument for the assessment of groundwater microbial quality to strengthen the future development of sensors. Uh, so this thing, yeah. So why do we need to know about microbial um, quality of groundwater? So I um, did a little bit of research just last week. The most recent available data from CDC show that um, in one year, in uh, 2013 and 2014, uh, there are a total of 42 drinking water associated outbreak uh, reported to CDC. Um, and that is actually not small because it has uh, uh, more than 1,000 in um, 124 um, people who got uh, who have to go to the hospital and even th um, 13 deaths. And then I got um, look at further the report and they found that a third of that is related to groundwater. Another third is related to surface water. The rest of it, another third is related to premise plumbing and drinking water distribution system. So it's distributed really equally. So all of those causes are very important. And since this uh, workshop is about groundwater, so I look at the data for private well. And uh, so what you see on the slide is the top six causes of the outbreak. And top five of them are microbial. Um, the first one, hepatitis A, is a virus. And then you can see uh, Giardia, a protozoa, um, cause, uh, so Giardia, Campylobacter, Shigella, E. coli, so all of those uh, pathogen cause diarrhea. And then the last one, the, the, the sixth one is related to a number of different uh, contaminant, chemical contaminants. So that shows that this, this is an important problem that we need to look at it in terms of uh, public health. Um, so this is the most recent and most comprehensive data um, review on microbial found in groundwater by Scott Bradford and Charlie Harvey of uh, um, USGS and uh, USDA. And so most of the data are available from the US because you can see that it's clearly easier to get uh, to do uh, this kind of work in the US. And what we found is there are norovirus pretty much everywhere. You probably know norovirus. That is, uh, uh, I'm sure you all got sick from norovirus at some point or the other. Um, and then there are other bacteria, Campylobacter, Legionella, E. coli, um, pro, um, and then also there are protozoa, cryptosporiosis, and Giardia. Uh, so the data I'm showing you here are from the U.S. because it's where the data are available. If you go to developing country, I'm sure the magnitude will be much, much higher. Uh, so why we found uh, microbial um, pathogens in groundwater? There is actually a scientific reason for that because bacteria or microbe or uh, protozoa virus, they are not just particles. They are not that easy to be removed by flowing through the subsurface environment. So with some of the work that um, we conducted in my group funded by um, NSF and uh, USDA, so thank you, Jim, for funding this work, um, that what we found is that there's a very high mobility of uh, microbe in the subsurface environment. So in one graph, I show the data for rotavirus, which is the diarrhea-causing virus. Um, so the x-axis is the separation distance between the virus particle and a, a sand surface. And on the other axis is the interaction force. And as you see that, if you just push, so we use atomic force microscopy to push the rotavirus closer to the sand surface, and we see a huge positive interaction force, meaning that the virus just didn't want to get close to the sand surface. The sand surface repel it. So, um, so it just doesn't like to stick to the, to the sand surface. On the other um, graph, I'm showing you 
the attachment efficiency as a function of ionic strength. Um, attachment efficiency meaning the probability when a micro, for example, sticks to another surface. If uh, the attachment efficiency is one, that means that any, like if the virus or a microbe, in this case crypto, uh, get close to the sand surface, uh, um, it's when, it's, the probability will be 100%. However, as you see that in groundwater, ionic strength is very small. So the probability that you can get the crypto particle to stick to the sand surface is less than 10%. So this data show that we did all of this data at a microscopic scale to show the scientific reason why we have high mobility of pathogen in the subsurface environment. So why I'm showing this work? So with some work currently, we, we get also funded from NSF and USDA. We are looking at um, the water quality in rural environment, um, the rural region in the US. So in this slide, so I'm just going to give you one example why this is important. This slide showing you the distribution of septic system in the US and the states when you see a really black color that is more than 40% of the residents are using septic system. So septic usually go together with private well. So where do we see a lot of septics? North Carolina, South Carolina, Mississippi, Alabama, Kentucky, and then um, the gray color is from 20 to 40% of residents using a septic tank. So um, uh, Missouri, uh, Kansas, uh, Oklahoma, so those are the states that, that, that you can see in here. That's just an example of that and on the, the places where we are doing some study now. Um, and then, um, so I just found this map from USGS just last week. So you can see that some of the region that currently have the flooding problem also the state where we have a lot of septics. And another thing that I want to, um, to show you, the, um, some of the photos that we took when our, uh, we went sampling, there's a lot of infrastructure problem, uh, broken bridges and, um, and roads. So, um, so the infrastructure is also very important in this case in here. Um, uh, I have learned a lot uh, from this workshop, and it seems that you do a really good job in looking at, um, in using remote sensing to determine the change in groundwater quantity. Um, however, given the uncertainty, ex extreme event like flooding and drought, groundwater quality, um, the presence of microbe and a chemical contaminant is going to be a, um, a serious challenge. Uh, that's what we think. So future groundwater management should also monitor not only the quantity, uh, quantity but also the quality, um, including chemical and microbial contaminants. And as we, we seem to all agree that we need a data simula um, a simulation, we need to use a combination of in-situ measurement, knowledge on, also knowledge on contaminant, phase and transport, and uh, modeling of groundwater integ uh, integrated its surface water um, to solve this um, challenge. So I'm going to end my presentation with some food for thoughts uh, here. So given the stress on surface water, how, how can we make sure that future uh, groundwater management also include the information on uh, quality? Can you develop some sensor network or some remote sensing system that we can help to manage the groundwater over time? Should we develop a national and also maybe global database on pathogens and not only pathogens, also their genome, um, antibiotic resistant genes, their sequencing, and more importantly, more, important, uh, more importantly is the link to hydrology. And do we, uh, do we know the link among land use, servant, agriculture, infrastructure, and microbial quality of groundwater, especially under uh, extreme conditions? Um, and lastly, do we need a new model for groundwater governance to protect not only its quantity, but also its quality? Thank you very much. <laughs>